believe that's all the factors. I'm intrigued. Thank you, John. Well, John, Christmas is Mr. Whiteside's personal property. He invented it and it belongs to him. Tomorrow morning, he will open each and every present, and that will be the biggest fuss you ever saw. Look who he's got presents from. Shirley Temple, William Marcel, Thomas and Marco, Billy Rose. I can hardly wait for him. Good evening, John. Good evening. Hello, Maggie. Merry Christmas, Sarah. Merry Christmas, Mr. Jefferson. Say, business is good, isn't it? <laughs> My, what a little quiet white mail in a weekly radio hour can get you. What did a spark tip get him? Full year supply of their product. Cream of mush. <laughs> Well, he'll give it right back to them over the air. Oh, you should hear tonight's broadcast. It's so sticky, I haven't been able to get it off my finger since I copied it. Oh, man. Look, Becky, I did the influence of God knows what. I just bought you a Christmas present. Why, Mr. Jefferson, sir? Only I'd like you to take a look at it before I waste my hard-earned money. Can you mind <laughs> having to see it? Sure. What is it? A two-year subscription to pick, click, look, and listen. Say so, anything I'm going to tell you? Come down and see it. All right. Sherry, I'm going out for a few minutes with <laughs> Horace Greeley. I won't be long. No well, no well, Mr. W. How about some cribbage after your broadcast this evening? No, I will not play cribbage with you, Klondike Harry. Where are you off to now, Madam Butterfly? I'm being given a Christmas present. Anything you want done downtown? Ah, uh, yes. Bring baby a lollipop. <laughs> well, how about you, Mr. Jefferson? What are you getting me? I believe I've enriched your feeble life beyond your capacity to repay me. Yes, that's what I figured. So I'm not giving you any. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, I was going to give you an old trust, but now I shame. <laughs> Time to say those radio men were coming. Round 6.30, don't worry, I'll be here. Look, Sherry, you are still four minutes over. You've got the cut. <coughs> oh, and Beverly Carlton called. He said... He doesn't know what kind of a train he can get out of Chicago, but he'll be here sometime this evening. Good. Is he staying overnight? No, he's got to get right back out again on the Queen Mary. Beverly Carlton? Well, he used to be one of my heroes. You think I could peek in the window and take a look at him? Used to be, you ain't staying half. Beverly Carlton is the single greatest actor in our theater today. Mm -hmm. Get this illiterate gnome skull out of my sight. And don't bring him back. <laughs> yes, Mr. Westside, sir. I won't come back until Beverly Carlton gets So. Where are you taking me, Mr. Jefferson? I can't wait. I'm like a ten-year-old kid. You look like a ten-year-old kid right now, Maggie, at that. You look like a Therefore, you came in. Hereafter, please not. 